I'm just going to get things kicked off. I just want to go and I've been working with Kerry and other people in the department in setting up this credit union, but really it's been the students that we set up and you should be able to find that out as we go through the afternoon. I'd like to thank Katie Clark for coming along, Margaret Burgess and Margaret McDougall as well, and for Young Scots for coming all the way from Edinburgh, and for First Alliance for all the help that they've given us so far, uh, and will continue to give us, I hope. Uh, I'm going to just ask Alistair to come up and say a few introductory words, and then we'll get through the speeches and you can actually all join the credit union, which is what you're here for after all. All right, thank you. That's what it's all about. Uh, I'm Alistair Moy, I'm the acting principal here at James Watt College. I'd quite like to welcome you all here today um, to this absolutely fantastic initiative. Um, as part, uh, I'm going to say a few words, very, very few words, but uh, I'll let everybody else who's been part of the project and leading it um, explain what we've been doing. Um, as part of our learning engagement programme, a number of student projects around the theme of enterprising. Uh, were commenced last year, including the one, the, the coffee cart that you see out there, and, and also this, this one, JWC Money One. Um, and these enterprising projects uh, were encouraged by Sharon McFarlane, our, our development manager, and Paul McLaughlin, um, and they were, they were driven forward by Kenny Allen, who's uh, here as well, who, um, who spent a great deal of time with the students, helping them through this project, and uh, with the result that we now have what we have here today. Um, in today's economic times, we need skills throughout that enable our learners to contribute through setting up their own businesses and contributing to the local economy. Um, and in the Ayrshire, we are below the national average for business startups. We need at least another 2,000 new businesses just to get up to the national average. This venture is especially exciting and it, it also encourages our learners to engage with the community whilst also helping them with their finances. And, and help people deal with their money worries. I'd like to welcome uh, the little uh, chair of our board to come up and say a few words. Thank you very much. Welcome everyone. As Alistair says, I'm the chair of the college, so it's incumbent on me to welcome everybody, I guess, uh, to, to, to this event, which is something that I really support. Um, it's not often that you see a practical uh, output from a, a college course that is so so welcomed and, and well developed. So my thanks to the, the lecturing team for doing this, and I think this is going to be a, one of these projects that's going to last for a very, very long time. And to the students who actually have created the environment that we're, that we're going to learn about, this is fantastic. And as we go into uh, much more economic um, issues or problems uh, with the country, then good governance of your, of your financial situation is so important. And one of the things that a credit union will do will help you um, get to grips with that. And for me, that's, that's fantastic. As a university lecturer and researcher, mm -hmm. I see a lot of students struggling uh, to get to, to grips with their financial situation. And there is a lot of help out here. And if you can learn early, and I, and I think this is a, a, real, good, a real good time uh, to, to do it when you're in your course, when you're in this type of environment, particularly James Watt College. So many thanks to everyone. Uh, many thanks to the students and to the, to the staff who support the, the whole college. It's been a fantastic. And let me tell you, I'll be saying some words at our next board meeting to uh, make sure that the whole board knows how well um, Kilwinning and, and James Watt is doing with us. So thank you. Well done. Thank you very much to Derek. I just realised that in my first introduction I managed to not even tell you who Alistair was before bringing him up. So I'll attempt not to make the same mistake when I ask uh, Katie to come up to me. Katie Parks, the MP, uh, for this area, and she's been a great help to us so far. So I can ask you to just say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, and um, can I thank you for inviting me today? Can I thank Paul and Kenny in particular, who have been talking to me about this initiative over the last few months? And can I thank all the students that have made today a reality? This is obviously just the first step on what I hope will be a very, very successful venture. There's absolutely no doubt that initiatives like this are absolutely vital. I don't need to tell this audience what has happened as a result of the fact that we've had irresponsible financial institutions who have helped create the financial mess we're in at the moment. 
And what we need to do as we rebuild ourselves is make sure that we move towards far more responsible and stable forms of financial management. And that's why institutions such as credit unions are so, so important. Scotland actually doesn't have that many people who are members of credit unions compared with many other countries in the world, countries such as the United States, Australia, Canada and Ireland. There's parts of Scotland where we've got quite a good track record for many years. In Glasgow we've had high levels of people that are members of credit unions, but in places like Ayrshire this isn't something that's been strong enough. And the reality is that because people haven't had safe ways to save, it's meant people have had real struggles in their life. One of the things that I've been involved in locally, where we've got a local campaign that's making a real difference nationally, was the campaign about Fair Pack, which was an unsafe way that people saved. People put money aside um, in an unsafe way, and when the company went bust, they lost all their money. And the reality is that that form of saving, whether it's savings clubs through the supermarkets, all the national supermarkets at the moment have schemes which are completely unprotected, Tesco's, Asda, <coughs> Iceland, all the big names, they have savings stamps that you can buy, and if they go bust or if they have financial problems, you're the ones that are going to lose your money first, and the banks will be all right, thank you very much. You know from the gift vouchers that we're seeing with organisations such as HNV at the moment, all these different high street big names going bust, and if you've got credit notes or you've got gift vouchers, you've got no legal protection whatsoever. So we've got a long way to go to make sure that we've got the kind of legislation in this country that ensures that credit unions are able to flourish, but also to make sure that many of the other ways that people have saved responsibly are actually safe. What you're learning about in your course and what you're doing here is a real example of what we need in the future. I'm delighted to give you my support. I'm delighted that you're actually um, turning the sort of academic study um, of money into something real that's going to make a, a difference in people's lives. And I think that you're going to have um, a great future with this initiative. And I'm delighted to be here to wish you every support and every encouragement in the early stages. Thank you. I was just, something just kind of struck me there as we're kind of going through this agenda. Does everyone in the room know what a credit union is? Just, just to be, I know that Craig's going to come up, Craig Potter from First Alliance is going to come up soon and, and do a little chat, and I'm sure you're going to cover part of that in it. At its base level, you're looking at what, it's almost like a savings and loan model. You've got a, an institution where essentially members will save, and that money can then be loaned out to the benefit of other members and who all exist within a local community. Uh, so we're really talking about proper ethical banking, but Craig will explain that a bit more. I just didn't want to go any further before, in case people were sitting thinking, what, why are we, why are we exactly here? Uh, my job today was to speak very briefly about this endeavour, more in terms of kind of learner engagement, the skills agenda, and how this project fits into enterprise as a centre here at North Ayrshire. There's a quote that's been flashing up on the screens, I don't know if you've noticed as you went around, uh, in 2010, the Financial Capability Evidence Review by Napier University reported, and I'll read this to get it right, those who, who lack financial capability are likely to experience a variety of associated problems such as poor health, low employment levels and an increased level of debt. There may also be negative consequences for local and national economies. Improving an individual's financial capability can help them to participate more fully in society and also help to reduce poverty. And if that isn't a mission statement, I'm not really sure what is. So when Kenny actually first floated the idea of a credit union, or our students running an access and information point of a credit union here at James Watt, we always knew that we were dealing with two quite two key but not necessarily distinct themes. There's a clear moral imperative around the whole issue of financial capability, especially in areas like North Ayrshire or Inverclyde, where I come from. But it was also really important that the project itself had a sound kind of curricular rationale that we had to stick to. You know, we wanted a way to take the skills that the students would be learning throughout the rest of the week and then apply them in a real world situation so that they could take those skills and realise what they actually were. And at the same time as doing this project, pick up a myriad of other skills which probably wouldn't have been encompassed within our course no matter how hard we tried to do it on a purely academic basis. So therefore, our students should learn by not by learning by running a real world project with all those associated challenges, but also helping to address the extremely pressing issue of financial capability within not only the student community, 
for the wider North Ayrshire community as well. Uh, there is a key thing to say, and Alice have touched on it, about skills. In the coming years, the employment picture is going to become more transient in nature. That's going to place a premium on transferable skills. But not just the skills themselves, but an, an, an individual's ability to understand, articulate and utilise the skills that they've actually got. So the promotion of a mix of, kind of knowledge and skills-based learning is pretty much key to what colleges are going to do going forward. If we want to retain learners and have them motivated, but also give them something that's useful, and give them something they can actually use, we need people who know their role in society and know how to apply what they've learned. Uh, so these kind of transferable genetic skills, which are really kind of promoted by the Curriculum for Excellence agenda, are going to be really central to what we do going forward. So it becomes increasingly important for any of us who deliver and design education to make sure that we promote opportunities to develop skills, to understand what those skills are, to understand how attitudes and behaviour link into employment. Uh, and that's really why this project itself is focused on that kind of rationale. It was, I guess, initiated to look at the four capacities of the curriculum for excellence, to look at the lack of financial literacy, and to provide opportunities for our learners to engage in a social enterprise activity, and by doing so, become more enterprising themselves, become confident, and allow themselves to, allow them to see a path forward into employment or into further education from this point. All that aside, the one kind of thing I did to make this analysis somewhat clearer, I talked to the class yesterday, and you'll see them all kicking about in their lovely, if slightly garish, covered t-shirts. Uh, and I asked them to contribute to this speech by identifying for me what skills they think that they've acquired. And I'm pleased to see the list itself was extensive. So in their own words, although paraphrased in places because this is a family show, uh, the class identified things like communication skills, team working skills. Because if you think about it, you've got 34 bodies in a room trying to work to one end. These are people who had not met each other for the most part before August. And by February, so what, five months later, they've had to form a cohesive unit, be able to find a way to work together, to talk to each other, and to talk with a collective voice to external agencies, which is no easy task. But they feel that their assertiveness has got better, and I don't think Kerry and I would particularly assume they ever had a particular problem with assertiveness, but uh, they certainly know what they want. Confidence, problem-solving skills. I mean, anyone who's done any kind of business in the past, but anyone who's been involved in any kind of project will know that it's not the easy stuff, it's the challenge, it's the, it's the things that come in your way that could stop you. But figuring, figuring a route round obstacles is something they've become very, very good at. Uh, it's not been the easiest thing in the world to get this to this point, but the guys, they have really focused on making sure that they're not willing to give up on it. They've done goal setting, they've been involved in project management, they've been involved in marketing using social media, they've liaised with external and internal stakeholders, but not only all of those things, but they've picked up basic financial skills, skills around the issue of financial capability, which they're now confident enough to try and pass on to other students within the James Watt College community. And that really is something for students from six months. They told me that they've developed a drive and determination to succeed. They feel their experience has been widened, both in terms of their frame of reference for financial and social issues. And they've now made a connection between financial capability and the wider social issues that affect the communities in which they live. So all of that, I mean, I found all that really positive. There's one quote that I got this year from one of the students in the class after we'd been to an event. Uh, and what they said was, while doing this, it's been like someone has lifted a blind <coughs> from my eyes and I'm seeing everything in a totally different way. And that's something that will definitely stay with me. Overall, I have to say, just in terms of the students, Kenny and I have been really, really impressed with the class, the sheer amount of effort they've given to the project. If I was an employer, the vast majority of that class, if not all, I would employ tomorrow and I would have no worries at all about how successful my business would become after that. They really are an impressive group of young people and I'd like to thank them on behalf of myself and of for Kenny. So that's all really that I have to say. I would like to ask Margaret Burgess if she would like to come up and say a few little words now and thank her very much for her time coming down as well. Thank you. Very pleased to be here, actually. I'm very delighted to be here. And the first thing I'd like to say is to congratulate the students on this project. I think this is absolutely superb, and I think it's been summed up with what is said 
uh, the students are producing this kind of work, this kind of initiative, um, yes, we want to see people that you we want to see everyone employed, but I hope that you can all meet your aim in doing that. Uh, I'm very impressed with what it's doing. And I, I want to comment from the perspective, for me, it's very important, the financial capability aspect of it. Before being an MSP, I worked in the advice sector and did uh, money advice and debt advice, and that really is something that opened your eyes to a lot of things. And I think if pe more people were aware of credit unions, there'd be less people going down that route of the debt advice and the money advice. They would have not gone for the payday loans, they would not have overextended because they would have had good sound financial advice. And I think students starting at this stage to do that is to me very impressive because it gets out there and the best people to talk to young people is young people themselves. And you'd, it's been said you've developed skills and learned skills and financial capability and can pass that on to other students because it is absolutely critical. I think Katie was absolutely right about how people um, think they're saving in one way or think they're sorting out their financial problems and in actual fact they're making it worse. And the one thing about credit unions is absolute without any shadow of a doubt, people trust their credit union. Credit unions to me are the local banks of the future and that's what we should be looking to achieve. So starting something uh, in a college, the enterprise that's been put into it, the work of the students to do it here, to work with the, the local credit union and that kind of relationship is important as well because of it knowing what's there in your local community. So I think that whole joined up part of it is also very important. So I, I just want, I don't want to take up much more time, but what I, I do want to say is that I hope all the students that are not part of the project, that you get that message out as part of your communication strategy, and I'm sure you will have, I'm sure that's all in your plan, to ensure that every student um, in James Lock College in, in Cowinning knows about the credit union, and also it spreads out to the rest of the James Lock College um, well, it's the Ayrshire College, the rest of the, the Ayrshire College now. I'm going to say the James Bond College in Munich, you know, but I've stopped myself in time. That goes out to the, the colleges in Ayrshire and also the, the other colleges in Scotland because I think this is an example that should be going out there to the other colleges and looking at that and getting out into the communities because it goes out on to parents, so your parents, members of the credit unions, that they're looking for a good, safe bank. All of that is part of the project, and that's how it will grow and develop, and I'm sure you've all thought that through in any case. So congratulations again to everyone involved in it, and thanks for having the opportunity to come here and hear about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Karen. I'd like to ask Kate Potter, on behalf of First Alliance Credit Union, to come up for just a little bit to explain really what the credit union is about, and I'd like you to do the next. Thank you, Kate. Cheers. Uh, yeah. so, Paul kind of touched on it that probably there's a lot of people here who don't even know what a credit union is, so that's probably the best place to start. Uh, a credit union is essentially a bank, but we've got an ethical side to this. Um, we don't have external shareholders, so when we make money, there's no manager who makes a profit. There's nobody who gets bonuses or anything like that. The money that we make goes back into our members. That's essentially the difference. So when we speak to people, We've got a slightly different conversation with people who don't know really to make money out of people. Uh, I don't make any extra money if you don't sign up for it. Just don't. <laughs> uh, we're owned by our members as well, so as soon as you've got a pound in, it's called a share. So you, you get a share in the company, uh, you essentially become my boss. Um, so if I'm not doing my job properly, uh, you just can tell me about it at the AGM and make a difference. Um, we have a common bond as well, so we're only for people who love our work in Ayrshire. Um, so we're very much community based. Uh, we're very much there to educate people on their finances and, and hope that people save and borrow responsibly and ethically. Um, we are delighted that this project's finally up and running. I started talking to Paul and Kenny about a year ago now, and it's been a lot of work to get to here. Uh, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's been about a year of work to get to here, and we're delighted because we see this as a huge development uh, in the services that we can provide for the local community. Uh, we love the idea of peer mentoring, we love the idea that money savvy students can teach other students about their finances and uh, get people even challenge them to think about their finances and budget and am I saving properly, could I save? Um, if I'm struggling, where do I go? Do I go to pay their lenders? 
or is there an alternative there? Um, and that's a big problem is, is getting the message that we're actually here because a lot of these will probably walk past us in, in the main street and didn't even know what a credit union was. Um, we see this as having a crucial role in the battle against payday lenders. We also see it having a crucial role in the, the upcoming uh, impact of welfare reform. Uh, there's huge changes coming to the benefits in Britain. It's going to impact on quite a, a large amount of students, probably all of them, to be honest with you. Um, and it's important that people know there's somewhere they can come and get advice with people like themselves who are not there to make money after you. They're not going to get your loan, you don't need to get uh, that are there to really help your budget and, and even getting access to a bank card, which we know for, for people right now is becoming a major challenge. So we're trying to make banking accessible to people. Um, so things like ID and things like that, that normally stops you getting a bank card, we would try and work on about it in the college with help you uh, with things like that. Um, we, did, we did really just hope that the, the students embrace the ethos of the credit union and really encourage people to save. We kind of spoke earlier about, um, we hope that it has had a real social impact, that it's not just for students, it's for lecturers as well, it's for uh, families and friends and, and the wider community as well. Um, we think we can have a real part to play and this is a big part of that. Um, we really just want to have a few more thank yous for Kenny and Paul in particular. They've put some incredible work in behind the scenes over the last year. Um, that probably even the students don't know how much work they've put in. Um, and there's been loads of barriers put in, in front of us. And, and they've really went beyond the Call of Duty to, to get us to where we are. And so we're really excited as they are that we'll finally go here and it's, it's up and running now and we can get started on Monday. Um, to the students, again, went beyond the Call of Duty. A lot of them have met me on days that they weren't even supposed to be at the college, which I found amazing. Uh, I mean, the normal perception of students, uh, they've, they've worked really hard, and any time I've come over, they've been really engaging and asked really relevant questions and wanted to make this a success. Um, and, and we are glad that it's in the right hands, that it's going to, it's going to work, uh, and we've got the right people in charge. And a particular thank to the marketing team, uh, Claire and Lynn, who have put some brilliant work in and have been unbelievably patient with us because we've been very pernickety about logos and getting all the market side it right um, and some of the stuff we've produced kind of last minute for us has been great um, so a, a big thank you to you as well uh, and apart from that I'm not going to bore these anymore we'll uh, get on with it and we can get food and comf make sure you go and talk to some of the students as well they're all really keen to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> we've been trying to get them some brighter t-shirts so you do where they want <laughs> but they're, they're really looking forward to talk to you so ask questions Take some leaflets, uh, we hope some of you is even challenge you to think about your budget and I'm a saving, could I be doing something a wee bit different? Um, am I going to need some advice on the benefits change? Come and talk to us. Um, we're based on the main street, if you don't want to talk to students, you can come and talk to me. Uh, apart from that, just a big thanks and let's, let's go on with it. And get it going. Very much to Craig. I think uh, it's really important today that uh, we'd ask the class if someone would come up and speak, and it's obviously this is a reasonably terrifying thing to ask someone to do. So Ian from the class, however, has braved it and said he's going to come and say a few words. So I'd like a big round of applause for Ian. Yeah. Uh, we'd just like to thank Kenny and Paul uh, for all the help they've given us, the, the classes, the marketing team have been amazing, uh, Craig and all the guys from First Alliance for their help and support, we couldn't have done it without them. And as, it's basically been covered in there, St Paul talking about all the skills we've gained through the project, we've had to learn how to work together, gain new skills and compromising and running a project, which no everybody's happy with then, but it's something you've got a kind of common common thing at the end that everybody can say, yeah, that okay, works, it's good. So learning that has, has been very important because we can take that into the workplace. Um, the kind of whole point of this project was to teach everybody about saving because most people don't save these days and when things go wrong they do have to get a line of credit. So we're trying to promote people, the young professionals of tomorrow, to learn how to save the ground up and also to educate people about the pitfalls out there, the payday lenders, the new things that are coming out with the universal credit and things. So this is good because it's given us a presence at the college now. We've got a platform we can work from when things come up that are going to affect everybody here. 
so we can then put that across to you guys when new changes come across it will affect your lives. So it's it's not the end of the project, it's really just just begun and where we take from here will be the next step. But we hope you all join, that'd be nice. <laughs> uh, but if you don't, it's, it's been nice that you all came along and there's free food and coffee and tea and yoga sales. Um, but yeah, thank you all for coming and cheers. Uh, one of many impressive individuals uh, within that group. I'm going to wrap this up very quickly. Alice and Alan, uh, our vice principals, going to come up and just uh, conclude the thing. I would just like to say that we have application forms over at the stall there for uh, James Watt Money One. Please think about joining up. If you don't want to do it today, every weekday in the college between 12 and 1 at reception, there will be a table where there will be information. There will also be a place where you can deposit cash, withdraw cash and all the rest of it. Seek us out. Seek someone with a t-shirt out. Seek the banner out. Seek the table out uh, if you've piqued your interest at all. It will at least enter into the discussion. It will be well worth it, believe me. Uh, and on that, I, I, one last thing as well. Young Scott have come down as well today, which I think uh, I should really say a massive thank you. Annie Padwick, who's sitting up the back there, has been a big help to us. Offering to try and incentivise joining the credit union, which is something we're working on as well. But uh, please visit their stall as well. Another com another institution who really focuses on financial capability and helping out 16 to 24 year olds. So I'd like to invite Alison up, and I'd like to thank you all very, very much for coming. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you very much. We've had some excellent speakers there, and um, I'll just reiterate all the, the partners that have been involved in this. It all started, as you'll know by now, with Kenny and Paul, um, who came to me just must be over a year ago and said, this is something that we want to do. What do you think? I said, absolutely fantastic. Um, the centre that Kenny and Paul are part of is called Enterprise. So what a great example of entrepreneurial spirit that we're seeing from the students today. And uh, I know that you'll go on to do really, really well in the future. This is a great, great for your CV and a great initiative and I think the, the proof is in the pudding. I think come Monday when, as Craig said, we get it started, we get it up and running, we need the support of, of the college community behind it uh, and we've got great support here today. Thank you for the staff who've turned up to support the event uh, and for all the other students who've turned up to support the event. I um, also like to thank the NUS, we've even got someone from uh, NUS in Aberdeen has come all the way down to see us today, heard about what you're doing. I'd um, like to thank Katie because I know that you put a lot of time and effort in with the students and the staff and we really appreciate the time that you've, that you've spent with us. Um, thank you to Margaret and the local MSP for being here today and our second Margaret, Margaret McDougall, for being here today as well. Um, First Alliance and all the work that's going on there, Young Scott, thank you for being here. Um, and the Commander College are here today as well, and represented our uh, new partners in Ayrshire. Um, and I think if I haven't mentioned you, I do apologise because you're part of that group. Um, but uh, we'd like you to stay, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, there's lots of sandwiches still there. Um, and look forward to this really kick starting on Monday and uh, looking forward to seeing how many uh, accounts we get set up. So thank you to everyone, well done. Kenny and Paul, great initiative, let's keep it going. Thank you. Alright, well thank you very much. See as Alison said, please, there's tons of food to get poured into it. It's almost afternoon break. Uh, there's tea, there's coffee, there's juice. You know, get to eat everybody. Thank you very much.